decision we make today may change tomorrow. In order to have the best expert advice, we have commissioned... Supercoach 360. <laughs> if the time's going up, it's recording. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the show. Mate, 100%. Okay. We need to find out why they think it's OK to say anything. It's certainly one of the greatest challenges in the history of the game. That's what they want to try and do. Megastar to Megastar! In this regard, we're leaving every option on the table. Excellent. Oh, what was that, buddy? something special! You know what? Uh, that's not talent. Uh-oh. Oh. Supercoach 360! The best way to handle these things is to stay measured, stay calm, you know, live your life as normal. Unless we start finding it off the people... Who actually do it? Makes a little ordinary life feel a little bit better for that moment. Makes it Supercoach 360 podcast. Welcome back to another edition of Supercoach 360 with the lads. Uh, Pre season still, so not overly too much to talk about, but with this week we're going to touch on the boosts, the buys, and the draw. Um, and we've got a few questions. Also, I want to give a plug to. Fantasy Pro, there is more to it. I will find that in a minute. Um, other than that, yeah, that's where we're just going to sort of look into this week as uh, everything else is pretty much speculation. We might dive back into some teams. I know Juzzy is running the ball up for us this year in the uh, Podmasters Cup, so we want to make him do well because he's up against the other podcasters. So. That's it, bragging rights. And it gets shared every week, so you don't want to be 20th. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an ego boost, let me tell you. Um, but yeah, and then uh, here with us this week, we have Con. How are you, mate? Good, buddy. How are you? Fantastic, as per usual. Juzzy. What's going on, bud? Good, good. Not much. Big Louie, how are we? Back, back for another season. That's it, Louie's back, back Louis. baby. I'm back. All right, big year this year. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk. Boost, buys, and draw. Where do you want to start, fellas? What do you think is the most crucial thing to touch on? First? Well, Louis back, and we talked teams last week. I'm curious to see what Louis' team makeup is straight out of the gate. Yeah, not good. <laughs> oh, look, <laughs> none, none of our teams are good at the moment. I cleared my team. I took a screenshot, cleared my team, and just <laughs> built a new one. Well, yeah, I'm just mucking around. This is probably my probably fifth draft so far in the past two weeks. So oh, wow. Well, it's not even two weeks, really. Wow, well, you're three going three hard. All right. Yeah. Um... So starting off, I have got Robson and Smith, putting hookers. Solid, like it, love it. Pretty much like everyone else. Um, front rowers, I got Tarpany and Torhu, uh, and Makatoa and Mawale on the bench. Yeah, mm, spin up big on starting too. Yeah. Uh, second row, I've got Elliot, Gilbert, and Garner. Yeah, like um, it, like it, like it. And then Jermaine Hookgood, Ray, uh, Ray Stone, and Howarth on the bench. Yep. Jack Howard from Storm. Looks like he might get a run. Um, halfbacks, I've got Cleary and Tenor Boyd. Uh, five eights, speaking pre-podcast, might be a bit controversial, but I've got Cody Walker as my starting five eight. Um, yeah, I reckon I reckon a lot of the pressure will be eased off Cody Walker this season. I mean, last year was at least his first year as you know, proper halfback in the NRL. Trail out for a bit. Trail out for a bit. And I think Cody... Will be back to his old. Not he's not a pressure man. Back, he can he can deal with big games, but he's not like a like put the team on my shoulders sort of man. He wants to he needs to run and do his he thing. He needs to do his own thing. He yeah. makes those runs, you know. So I think he will stepping up be stepping up from last year definitely. Um, he's got Schuster on the bench. In five Who eight. Did you sport Louis again? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite remember. <laughs> well, come on, Mawali, <laughs> Mawali on the bench. Hey, he's going to get game time this year Sweet. with uh. N- Nichols gone. gone. He'll be getting a lot more game time off the bench. Um, and oh God, if you if you weren't sure I wasn't a South supporter now, you're gonna about to hear it. I've got Campbell Graham in my starting lineup. <laughs> <laughs> he's your gun centre. What happens when you I, have the ball? I mean, he's a gun. I mean, it, I, in Coming my centres. See, in my centres, I like the way I do it. Is I like to have at least one person that I can guarantee is going to get me. Base stat points. Yeah, 50, exactly. 50, 60 points a game, you can almost put your money on. And he did well last year. And he's in a good squad. He's got Ilias' side. He's on Ilias' side, and he's just going to get better, Ilias. Yeah. It was towards the end of the last season, Ilias was giving him some pretty good ball, making quite a few line breaks. Um, came close to scoring a few times um, and crossed them. Um, yeah, I reckon 
flying under the radar right at the moment. He was getting shit ball off A-Ray for years before him. Well, I mean, he was... <laughs> 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 I mean, that's one way to put it, Con. <laughs> he was, <laughs> well, he, was, he wasn't as solid as he was as a player compared to last season. He It was a late start, I remember. I've always yeah. rated Campbell Graham. I'll oh, yeah. Yeah. He does and, his um, own work on the, on the non-attack, non-favoured side of the field. You know, that, and he does it on the right-hand side of the field and he just does his own work. I and, think at that price, there's probably better options, a bit cheaper, and do the same job. Probably. Probably. Um, I've also got uh, Murray Tuolagi. Mm. Where's he going? He's a Cowboys winger. He's a Cowboys winger. winger. Oh, Given yeah. their draw at the start of this season, yeah. I'm looking, I'm thinking they're going to be scoring quite a few tries, especially down that wing. Well, I'm seriously considering Val, mm. just because of that fact as well, and yeah. Val's a gun. And at 576 to a, to a luggy, I can see him making money, definitely. He um, can go on a run, he could score 10 tries in five games. Yeah. And his price could just go to cool. Yeah. Um, I've also got Isaac... <laughs> Again, South. Uh, Isaac Thompson, um, although he's been commonly picked, uh, it looks like he's definitely going to get that wing spot at South. And w- in the so couple of games that he played, he Don't you he have a well. young gun, Kalo Kalo, who's a fullback, up and coming, like absolute weapon, like 19 years old, who could fill that wing spot instead of Isaac Thompson, a 26-year-old rookie who hasn't really obviously been able to cement a first grade spot for eight years or so. Why wouldn't you give the young kid a crack? He might not be physically Yeah, he's he's a decent sized dude. He's I think he's very well equipped to him and there's um I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but there's another there's another um uh there's another young kid that's been scoring tries left, right and centre in S G ball. Um uh, <coughs> I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's another one that's he's been put in the 30-man th- squad list. And, yeah, he's been scoring be Kalo tries. Kalo. Not Kalo Kalo. Nah. It was another one. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But, yeah, uh, I've seen his, r- his his name thrown around a bit as well. So, But I do think Isaac Thompson will get that. I know you've spot. seen his name thrown around a bit. Can't give us a name which has been thrown. <laughs> Cheers, bud. I was only thinking about it earlier. Nah, it's alright. I'm on the lookout for him. It's, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I've just looked for the other South Swinger who we haven't spoken about. The other cheapie. You can probably find him. Uh, it's, all, it's all speculation till TLT. <laughs> That's what I mean. Positions, man. What, what, else, positions you got, what else you got going on over there, Louie? Uh, I've got also got the Hammer in my centre wings. And I've got Remus Smith, Talao, and uh, Alamotti from Bulldogs. And at fullback, Teddy and Trell. Oh, sorry, Teddy, Teddy and Turbo. Teddy yeah. Turbo. Teddy oh, Turbo. classic super coach. Hey. I see what mm. you're doing here. Mm. Going way back, taking a retro three years ago, bro. I think that's where I'm at this week too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Teddy Trell. No, Teddy, Teddy Turbo. Teddy Turbo. Yeah. Nah, I see, I'm thinking Turbo Trail. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've done a complete revamp for my team too. It's gone completely haywire, and I did it 20 minutes before the show, so no doubt it is on point. We'll get to them teams a bit later because everyone heard our teams last week. Get into some... Did you just go and make 13 changes? Yeah. <laughs> but we talk about our teams later. We'll talk about more super coach relevant shit than our teams. I agree. Um, the boost. Now, we've all got different... We all use the boost differently last year. Um, I just want to know, do you have a sort of plan mapped out in your head where and how you're going to use your boost? Like It will, of course, depend on how your team starts, but Let's just say, just before money changes, would you use a boost to bring in the maximum people that are making the money? Like, is that a boost that you're probably going to use for sure at the start of the year, or are you going to hold, or what are you going to do? No, I'll definitely use one within the first two rounds, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get it right. Got to make yeah. sure if if something's been thrown your way that you weren't planning for, or an injury happens, or whatever, you got to be on top of your team at the start. Yeah, you can't afford to fall behind from week two. Or yeah, because it, it's all about cash generation. That's the thing which I'm figuring out this year is I just need to figure out how to make as much cash as possible. First, like, 12 weeks of the competition. And then I can use that cash and all those investments to what, be able to get the players that I, I want for my dream team. What about you, Louie? What is your take on the boost? Like, you boosted well last year, yeah? Like, I'm pretty sure you, you were... You yeah, I used... Right. 
I used um, all bar one in the first four rounds. Oh um, wow, you smashed it! Yeah, and then you I held, teddied it. I, I teddied it. Yeah, and uh, I held one. I think I used it like round ten or something like that. But it got me my team in a position where I was. I think I was top one th- one thousand, top two thousand, right up until right at the end of the comp. Which ended up killing me. Though. And then do you, <laughs> do you did you regret not having boost a bit later on in the season? Did you waste? I one? needed. Yeah. I I did waste one. I did waste one, but yeah. Um. Uh, I think it was Peter Huku went went on a run, and I stupidly it was like a last minute thing. Oh yeah, yeah, better get him in. Wasted it. Yeah, Gone. that's when he dropped off. Wasted it. And the player that I tried, I can't remember who I traded him out for, but the player I traded out, I remember kicking myself because he went on to score like 80 or 90 that game. So. <laughs> well, I remember I, I remember my boost saga. Like, you you were telling me boost it, boost it. And it was instant regret after I did it was, boost it. It was to get Taylor May. No, it wasn't. Yeah. That was a different boost. Out. My first oh, boost discussion. Okay, so you got a lot of regrets on boost it. Yeah. My first, <laughs> my first boost discussion with you was about bringing Nico in before the money changed. Oh, um, do and it. you said do it. And I said, oh, what, like, what if we need these things later on? Like, they're, they're an untried and tested thing. In Supercoach, but... They're a spoilty. That's what I've thought about in the off-season. Like, I didn't have these luxuries the year before, so what am I hanging on to them so hard for now? Like, granted... How many did you finish the year with, Berks? That's beside the point. <laughs> it's not beside <laughs> the point. It's exactly the point. You had a chance to boost. You went, nah, I'll hold on. Yeah. And then you ended up with one to finish the season. Like it was, you, you definitely should have boosted. I guarantee you, like a hundred percent. Played the whole season, it still had a boost. Let, let me ask you a question, Bergs. <laughs> What's your boost strategy for them the season? Well, yeah, you, you, finish, yes. you finish one in hand. So what are you going to do differently this year? Well, straight away this year, I did. With I've, his six boosts that he begged. I've thought. I've thought about where, like, <laughs> where I should definitely pull the trigger on a boost, and I think. Like, bar, bar injuries and if your team's just full shit week one, you just do your general trades. Probably don't boost that week. But definitely have have the boost in hand for week two, be, like, when the money's about to change, like, after that week. So that way you can boost in the money makers and boost out the ones that aren't going to do, do you so proud, you know what I mean, and keep the money where it is. Oh, I think it's a definite option to boost round one. Yeah. If you if you've got to if you've like stuffed if, up and you yeah, entered a team, if you brought a player expecting certain things and they've come nowhere near the list, and yet player B or C that you were also thinking of in that position is doing the thing you were expecting them to do, and there's a couple of those situations. Well, I'm pulling the trigger. For, for for me, I mean, like yeah, that's the players I'm looking to get in for sure. The players that are doing the work and have already proven are going to be making the money. Uh, and I'm just offloading the people that are losing cash. The wrong choices I've made that are going to lose me cash. At the start of the game, I don't want to be losing any cash. I need to just generate as much cash as I possibly can at the start of this game because I'm going to need as much cash as I can get my hands on to make my dream team happen. These guys cost heaps. I'm going to try to jump on the guns if I see them going on runs and s- stuff like that. But I'm going to ask you this well, next that's, thing. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that's... I, I did the very similar thing last year, and that's how halfway through the season I got Cleary, Hines, Teddy, and I think I had Trell as well, because I used my boost to make as much cash as possible. Yeah, sweet. Get those plays in that are you know must has really. Seeing as you boosted four times in the first so x amount of rounds, he boosted every round he could for the first month. Would you do that again? Like, granted, Ooh. you could do it again, cool. but Good one. Um, if necessary. Looking back now, and you even said you had a bit of regret at the end of last what, year. What was the one I, trade you regretted? Was it within those first four, or was it that round 10 one that was just random out of the blue? The, the, when, when did you get Hiku? It was round that, that round nine or round 10 one, the last so, one that I did. The first that, four were justified. The first four, yeah, set, set my team up very well. So if you had just um, saved that Peter Hiku one for maybe round 20 or something. So you're just there was, there was one time in round, uh, I think it was around 20, 20 or 21 around then, there I thought, uh, what the, I just need that one boost. If I had that one boost, yeah. that I, I would have been fine. would have been right up there. But because of it, 
Just yeah, boosted yeah, a bit yeah. early, Louis. Yeah. Had Happens the, to the had, best had of us. The bl- blood rushed to the head and just what, did that stupid oh, UK Oh, he got all excited. Yeah, I was, it, was a, it was Thursday at work. I was like, oh, I've got enough time to do work. Bro, you never, you never no. boost at work. No. Don't make yeah. life decisions no. like that when you're stressed. Boosting at work is my fucking best. <laughs> 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 paid to boost. Look at that. It's currently oh, signed, buddy. <laughs> no, but what about you guys? Like, did you see there is, is there a key number? Like, is it only two boosts in the first, say, eight rounds to ten rounds? No, there's Ooh, no key say. number. Yeah, if, it's just if, you team. Need to, if you need to use them. Depends on how your team well, started. That's it. If two of your players get COVID and another one goes down with an injury. See, I'm not even so much thinking about the COVID and the injury side of it. Ultimately, I'm willing to use three to get my team where I want it to be early on. And I'm going to try and keep two up my sleeve for those rainy days that Louie's talking about. But uh, you can't hold it too long. End up with, you know, blue boost at the end of the year. So if you have six rainy days at the start of the year, you're still just going to save those two boosts for another rainy day at the end of Not the year. necessarily. Also, it depends how many bad decisions I've made. That's it. Because like, I've been you, stuck behind before and it's so hard to get back. You can't go into a season prejudging when or where you're going to use your boost or you're just going to hurt yourself. You just got to, when the situation arises where that boost needs to be used, just use it. Listen to Sensei don't... over here. This well, is amazing. Does that not make I sense? mean, well, yeah, no, 100%. Like, like, that's it. You're the turkey philosopher, bro. 100%. Yeah, like, I mean, you are making complete sense. You, you can't. You've just sort of got to feel it out. You really do. And you just got to look at your team. But if you're thinking, should I use a boost? And if it's if it's one of those must-have players, Nico was last year. I made the mistake. I didn't boost Nico in. I used a boost that round, I think, but I, um, I boosted someone else in. I should have got Nico, 100%. It was my biggest failure for the year. And it set me back, bro. I, I never recovered. Yeah, agreed. I had the same drama. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, talking to other boosters and that, like people that boosted early and boosted through the juice, like they all said, oh, there was that one boost I just burnt through for no reason. Like, well, I remember yeah. Teddy burnt through it probably two or three, I reckon, that were just completely unnecessary. But he's like, I mean, I'm near the top 100 or... I'm, I'm he was addicted by that point. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm just going to get me to the top. Yeah, that mentality. Well, so he got trapped in those first two or three boosts, maybe really significantly did help him. And then he just got carried away where... And he was max trading too. Yeah, that's it. He could have saved quite a few of those because I remember discussing them with him. And he could have saved quite a few of those. And towards the end of the year, he needed instead it. of him sinking like a lead balloon, he could have been still floating higher. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll segue into the buys, right, from from here. Just because I've looked at the buys, and that's why I wanted to bring up Boost, because this year's buys are unreal. Like, unreal. It's a completely different game, man. That's what I was saying last um, week. In the first 12 rounds, you've got 12 single buys. No team gets a buy twice there. Then round 13, you have a 17 buy, where a few of those teams in there get theirs, like uh, Panthers, Chooks, Sharks, Storm. Titans and the Tigers all have buys. That takes their buy tally to two buys. They've only got one left come that time of the year after round 13. Um, I'll get it up. Then after round 13, you've got round 14, which has got three teams on the buy straight after Origin, which is sort of, we sort of come to expect similar casualties around that sort of area anyway and then round 15 you've got a single buy round 16 you're back to seven teams having a buy which in between there's n- it's a big ask to get a swinger but in. also as we talked to last week with the rule changes it's only the best scoring 13 in those rounds yeah yeah so it is. you That's only really have to have 13 have you guys clarified players. that with anyone is everybody else saying the same thing? Cause That's the rules. Are you sure? Yes. I haven't checked. I need to, I need to double That's check them. I feel like I need to double check. I have not checked that. Have you no. read that, Louis? Uh, not properly. I brief, briefly skimmed over it. That's what I mean. good to see everyone else is on top of it. Well, but yeah, no, well, that's, de- that's definitely the case. It's the best scoring 13 out of your starting seven or 13 and four reserves. So you name 17 plays still, but then you take the best 13 scoring, whether they're reserves or starting. So so basically, those rounds, if you don't put your reserves on the right people, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's, it it's really made matter. it so just much easier. Yeah. yeah. 
You only have to have 13 gun players really now. Then and you, maybe one emergency just in case. You, you come back after round 16 then with the three games. Uh, it's a three-game um, buy, and then round 18 is a single-game buy. And then round 19 is another seven-game buy. It's just... That's 21 buys in a matter of Well, four, they're, they're all the origin weeks. And then that's after... That's why they're all on significant buys. Yeah, I know, but I'm just thinking, like, that is a time for me where at least two, even three boosts are going to be required if you're going for overall. But you only need your best 13, remember? Yeah, I know, but you still got to get your 13 in, mate. Like, Yeah, well, as long as you don't have origin plays over that period, maybe one or two, but if you've got... Say 22, 23 non origin players, and you need 13 of them in each round. It, the changeover is not as hectic as it was. Oh, I don't I know, man. I just, just looking at it, it's very sporadic the way they've done it. Like, the buys are everywhere if you catch them adrift. Yeah, it's not like the draw where a team plays each other twice in a month. N- no, <laughs> well, it's just stupid yeah. fucking draw. I don't know. I don't, for me, I just think. One, maybe two boosts. I think even if at one point you have to cop a hit early, you might have to just cop the hit. You just have to pick the right way to go if you catch my drift. I think you're going to need at least nah, three, I don't three boosts nah, through there, I think. I think you're way, yeah, you're way overthinking that, bro. No, yeah, on, honestly, I think I think Con's, you know, Sensei's advice was right. You need to just feel it out. Some guys like Braddo used a bunch of them throughout the origin period and did that really well. And he reaped his benefits. He, he came home with a wet sail, bro. Yeah. Like, he came home real strong, and he did it real smart. But that was good for his team because he started strong. Or, but you know, he started the, the way he started. The buys were also a heck of a lot more important last year than all the major buy rounds. Well, the major like buy rounds big are ones still... In 13 and 17, I think it was. The major buy rounds still affect you, but you are 110% right on the way the top 13 works. You still do select your 17 players and your top 13 get scored. So, sweet as. you load easier. Yeah, that's it. You just do, do what you got to do. And the fact that you don't have to play four other players, it narrows it down. People can't load their teams. That wakes them way fairer. So, it I'm totally down with it. doesn't make it fairer. Well, no, no, I, I, it I, makes I, it fairer for the lazier people who don't want to go no, through buy coverage and do the research and stuff. No, not necessarily, because sometimes you might sacrifice three points in other places. The pre-season before Supercoach even was sorted of by most other people, going through the draws and shit. I don't yeah, know, really. but there's, look, there's there's ways to plan it, and then there's ways it happens throughout the season, right? And sometimes you can do all the planning for the buys. Oh, absolutely. You, like you guys were saying this last year, yeah. <laughs> like you do all the planning for the buys, and not. Nah, it that's doesn't work, and sometimes it's good. You know, you just that's it. You just completely just miss them, pass them over. There was different strategies for it. I think a buy a week is going to be the biggest thing this year. Like I really do. I think you what? Well, until flicking that player around and making sure you've got the depth at all times to ultimately have eighteen players in case one of them's on a well, buy. Well, it's going to stop you from carrying like now I've, seven Panthers and six Storm or whatever. Like. I believe like Braddo had a question at least earlier about in, early in the season. Once they're all through their buys and yeah, load up on the good teams. What's the maximum number of players you would stack your team with of players of a certain team? Probably three to start the season. Probably yeah, three. three. You've got a concise number straight away. Well, two, two or three, because any more than that, you you got twenty two players to pick from, and probably at least eight or nine of those are probably going to be cheapies or iffy bussies. So. That leaves you with what? 13 players. And you need to make 17 players. So if you have any more than that, your numbers are shrinking and shrinking. That's what I'm saying. People will drop a player here and there because they're overloaded by a certain team. No, now, I just don't overload yourself until your teams are through the buys or they've got a stretch of eight or nine weeks per se where they can go and you can get in four or five of them and then start trade out a few of them as they come to the end of that. See, well, my, sorry. Go, go. So, in my team, as we heard, I've got four South players. South don't have their first buy until round 16. Oh, really? Round 16 is South's first buy. Oh, there you go. So, so, you, can, so you can carry five or six South players from the start. They got, they got exactly. a rough start, Until though. origin starts. Rough start. They got, a, they got a real rough start for the first six rounds. But, but for me, that's match fitness. That's when you start reassessing your team. If you didn't have the money change or if you've still playing around after the money change, you really see who's on and who's not and who's getting the minutes and who's not. 
You know what I mean? Like that's when the players really start to come good and start pulling out real good scores. And if you've got a few good players from one team, uh, if you've got three or four players that are one team that are doing well, that's three or four players that, you know, potentially for half the season, you just, you, you can leave there. You don't have to worry about any buyers coming up, trying to work around how to get them out, if we're going to cover, um, especially with these big buy rounds and stuff. Well, there's like a couple of teams that have benefited, I guess you could look at it that way. Storm's not, a, hasn't got a buy till round nine, which is a pretty decent chunk of your season with like your Harry Grants or your Munsters and stuff like that. Even Nick Meaney, if um, Papenu hasn't remains unfit, but I think he'll be a talking point later. Um, Dolphins, again, another team with... It's a whole new squad, so there should be some positions there. I don't know if they're awake. Watch and see a couple of them, though. And then <clears throat> Para doesn't have a, a buy until round 14. So they go 14 rounds... Um, without a buy as well. So you can easily load up on a couple of them as long as they're your money makers if they have them, if they have them. Um, and then you can sort of get them rid of them before their buy and stuff comes around and get down to your t two, three players, you know what I'm saying? Carry your Ryan Madison's and that through. Yeah, you know. And um, well, you use them as your loops. What a Now, I don't know if any of you's baby old, but if you baby old, it sort of showed you a different strategy to the loop for me. Like, I know it's different in NRL because you get the lowest AE, you know. Yeah, you don't get one in each position either. No, you don't. But the way I see it is now, by rights, we could even carry a player from each team when, we, when their buy comes. So it gives you the automatic loop option, especially if you're looping, say, Tommy VC and he pulls out a 200. It wouldn't matter if you got a 20. You know what I mean? Because you've automatically got 400 points. Yeah, good point. So it's it's just that thing. I think with having the buy, the buy every week's giving the loopers a bit more of a look into the game. It's a matter of, you know what, we've all looped and it's come back to bite us in the last year in NRL. Uh, plenty of time. So I'm, not, I'm not a big looper, eh? I probably only looped five times in my life. Well, I think the loop this year is a bit more viable. Like, just the way it's set up, and you're always going to have a buy player. Um, Depends on when that buy player plays in the round. Well, it doesn't matter. They don't play. The yeah, but you can't, you can't add them afterwards. You know what I mean? If someone hasn't gone great guns yet, you don't necessarily want to sacrifice that 20. You're going to have to wait for them to have played to be able to then run the VC loop on them. Switch that other person in, throw the captain on them to make sure you get that loop. Look at me teaching you how Supercoach works. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the draw and the buy is massive thing to look at this year. Have you looked into it, like, in any way, shape or form? Like, have you got any theory on it? Not too in-depth, but... Obviously, South and Pan um, South and Parramatta fans are a lot more attractive now. Yeah, knowing that they don't have a draw a buy until at least round fourteen. So Same South rounds. for me, I think you can sort of wait, and so they've got the what is it four tough games to start. There's probably some price losses in a couple of them guys. Um, they don't start strong. Yeah. Oh, you know. We or if all their know, opponents start stronger, I should say. Well, we all know Latrell does his own stuff, and I think you pulled a stat out. That he against top four teams, he's he's like ninety average ninety or something, didn't he? I think I read somewhere that the average just as good, if not better, against the top eight than he did against the bottom eight. Yeah. So he steps up against the teams he needs to. Well, they he's got renowned for it. they've got sharks, panthers, roosters, seagulls, storm, bulldogs. First six games. Dogs are flogging. Uh, <laughs> 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 they get. I reckon, man, they've got a. They're going to be deadly this year. They click, you know, there's going to be a lot of people in trouble. But, yeah, that isn't. See, that's not the ideal start for any club. Like, that's a tough, that's a pretty tough ask. Mm. Um, don't get wrong, dogs, you don't know if the dogs of old are going to turn up. But on paper, we're a lot stronger than we have been in the last several years, you know, since probably 2015, even 14. It's probably the last time we'll be strong on paper. So... Um, tough ask, but who do you start with then? Cam Murray's obviously ideal. Um, 
he look, does his job. Pricey, so isn't Cam, Cam Murray's one of the, one of those players that you can guarantee he's going to be getting you points every single week against Pan, whether it be Panthers, Storm, whatever. Anyone got love for Cook? No, I'll be honest. I'm on um at the moment. I'm on Harry Grant. I've gone up from Robson just on the no Pappenhausen thing. Is that locked in stone? What Harry Grant? No, no Pappenhausen. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not locked in stone. But from from what I've heard, and I've seen a picture of his knee, it's still hectically swollen. That he's not even running yet. So yeah. Yeah, I've seen pictures of Tommy at least running. How far out are we from the season now? Four weeks? Five weeks or Five? four weeks. Four, I think. I heard 30 days today. 30 days today? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Trial starts in eight days, bro, the first trial. Oh, wow. From the point of recording. It's probably seven from the time yeah, people listen to it. That's why I had trials listed. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. I snuck up on me. So what do you got right, there snuck up on me too. I heard it this morning. I was like, hello. What do you got there in that gift from the doc? We got a, uh, let me just give the shout out to the uh, Podmasters. Is it the Podmasters chat? And the Supercoach Hub on Discord. That's how it goes, eh? Yes. Uh, shout out to both of them pages and groups. I, I suggest you get around them. Um, the, the Podmasters G- Cup. The Podmasters Cup. Um, it group is on a, Facebook. On Facebook, and it's got all the pod podcasters there, and then you got the Supercoach Hub on the Discord, which is on the Discord. I you've got to get links. I'll put a link in our closed group, so go look in there for a link to the Supercoach Hub. Got anything over there, lad? No, bud. You're rolling the show. Oh, am I? <laughs> yeah, clearly. Okay. Twenty minutes in. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, you can read that thing, eh? The doc sent us out this colour coded thing. <clears throat> now it is obviously based off last year's uh defensive stats we believe. Yeah. Um so your oranges are your I don't think we're gonna explain the table to anyone. We'll put it up on our Facebook, that's all good. Big shout out to Kando and the uh, Podmasters Cup for rolling this through to us. I'm not sure who made it, but if you did Get in contact and we'll shout you out too. Well, just judging on that, it says the cows, the cows have a very good run. Broncos is okay, but two tough games to start. Knights don't look terrible. They got a Knights few a in a row, run. um, but that's come round six or seven. So you might be able to get a few price rises out of a few, uh, KP, few players. For instance. Yeah, well, there you go. Lockie KP. Miller, maybe. Well, Lockie Miller, I mean, that's it. I mean, he's near 600K, Some so he just needs to maintain. Hastings. I just want to talk to you about KP, just quickly. Like, you have to. Juzzy might remember, as it was his first year super coaching with... Um, <laughs> he might, because his memory is dodgy. But do you remember the KP Why? experiment at 5.8th? Uh, yeah, I remember you guys being fuming about it. And I was cheering because you could get him double dual position. But, I mean, the Knights, it, it didn't work. He didn't sort of feel comfortable and didn't work as a 5'8". Now, the, the, tr- the thing for me with him going to 5'8", they haven't even swapped coach. Um, I understand it's a different structure and makeup of the side, but what's made him a 5'8 in the last two years, you know, three years? Well, he's had another two years of NRL experience. He's had another two years of origin experience where he's hanging out with the best 5'8 in the game for while um 5 8 and fullback aren't too dissimilar in the way they attack mainly the defense that's different and he's matured coach is matured and jackson hastings i think the way he has his 80 touches a game if he's got kp running off his head do what he does like right, that could be dangerous man see i like i like kp i do kp but KP is no effort man. Do you know what I mean? He's See, I need to differ because some, I've seen yeah, a, some amazing been. displays of effort from KP, bro. Absolutely incredible displays of effort. Try minute, savers. 80 minute displays of effort is what I'm looking for. In origin. Again. Against the best players in the game. Last All couple right. of years, so, nah. Where is the captain of your club? Probably the marquee highest paid player in the world oh, yeah. at Newcastle. Yeah. Don't you want him doing jo- that Josie shit every week? Paid more. Don't you want him doing Absolutely that every week? Absolutely, I do. Of Doesn't course, I do. do. And, and that for me, there that... was a reason why he was my favourite player eighteen months ago, and now I couldn't care if we traded him. 
That's what worries me about the KP experiment. He's so, but when he's on the field and he's playing, he's super coach friendly. Let me Very ask you guys friendly. a question. Are either of you taking the gamble on KP? I've got him at the moment. In fullback. Yeah. If he starts round one, he'll be my fullback. Running a five eighth of fullback to me, that seems dodgy. That seems dangerous. I mean, there's potential there if they like nail I, it. I can see Cameron. Who Munster. they got? I can see Cameron Munster numbers in him if he can do it right. And Warriors, Tigers, Dolphins, Raiders, Manly, Warriors, and then in round seven they go into Panthers, North Queensland, Eels, a bye. Come back to Titans, Sharks, Manly, bye. Oh, yeah, their, their run's a bit jagged, but then their run home looks pretty sweet as well. So maybe for the start and end of the season, we just avoid him for origin. I can't see any reason why there's, he can't do what Cody Walker or Munster do down there, left-hand side. All so right. My, my plan at the moment, I was actually thinking about this the other day, about getting KP in towards the, probably the later third of the season. At the start, I don't think it's going to click. But the biggest threat, I reckon, is... The fans crying out, this isn't working, blah, blah, after one or two games. I think they've got to stick with him at 5'8", from the beginning all the way through. I reckon about halfway through the season, you'll see stuff starting to really click between him and Hastings and, you know, the second rails running off him. I think they've got to stick with him, though. How long are you prepared to suffer, Con, as a Knights man? Two weeks. How much, <laughs> how, how much more longer? So what? How much more longer, you mean? Yeah, well, that's I've it. I've been so... suffering since 2001, mate. Rough. Oh, it's been a long time. I mean, KP's been in the club for, what, three, four years now? Yeah. We showed a little bit of promise here with Mitch and stuff. Wayne took it to a prelim. Yeah, nah. All fool's gold. Oh, how long has he been in Newcastle then? He must have been in Newcastle for ages. Probably four, three seasons. Four seasons. Three seasons. Say 19. We signed. Three seasons, I think. He's been there. He's at the Cowboys our first year of super coaching. So. Then he might have been. Or he signed at Newcastle, but still playing for the Cowboys. Maybe. <clears throat> yes. So. So yeah. that's Booster. We're talking about buys. Who else do you think uh, are you looking at? I mean, that's the interesting thing about the first buys. I mean, Dragons, even though they've got the buy round one, then have not bad of a run. Um, Seagulls, same thing, but they probably have a more difficult run, but Turbo's Turbo, and at that price, for me... Well, see, the Tigers, with the buy in round 7 and 13, that's an ugly one. And then there's other teams where they had their buys one or two throughout the origin period as well, where stars are already going to be missing for origin, so that's another yucky situation. I think Storm might be in that boat, was it? Do we answer the question properly about how many team, how many players you would have in your team? Would you um, plan strategies and plan to yeah. load think... up on, say, Eels and Cowboys to start the season? Were you willing to take that risk if they don't turn out to be some of the, the higher performing if... teams? I mean, I know I... they're both good teams from last year. Hopefully there's a cheapie or two in amongst their squad. Um, there are some players that you would look at to start the year with in those sides. Um, but for me, I, I still wouldn't carry any more. I would ca- if I had someone with at least a nine to ten game break in between buys, I would carry four to five of those, as long as three were making money and two of them sort of was pick and stick for the season guys, like a Harry Grant and a Cam Munster. Um, the rest I'd be looking to sort of transition in and out by round nine. You know what I mean for the money. Um, also, dragons. I thought if there was three dragons you could start with, maybe because then they don't have another worry till round fifteen, I think. So that's fourteen round gap. Name three dragons you start with. Um, I haven't got that on off the top of my head, but there are going to be some spots opened up there. Low Max Hunt. Sims has left there. They have no hooker. McCulley retired. Um, if he does 
the water fine and good. But what if they want to try to make it bad? Yes, I could. Yeah, they're not, they're not a... Tigers on, on the white square, too. You can see what happens. Tigers is... I don't think it's value. I think they're just... They're Tommy Salau's value in yeah, Louis's yeah, team. 200 odd thousand, I think he is, isn't he, Louis? 301. I'm just looking at who they brought in. Like, there's no, no cheap back rower. Um, no cheap back rowers coming through for them. Like, you've got IPAP and you've got Bateman. Yeah. Both going to be probably at their... Their topest dollar. But you, you've got underperforming backs for the last couple of years who haven't had a forward pack to perform behind. Or a hooker like Appy Corris out, 238. So there could be money to be made there in the backs. For sure. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a gamble, but they've got a juicy run I'm to taking, open up. I'm taking Dewey and Offer at but the start. They don't have their first buy till round seven, so you could at least get three price rises, say. Out of which is pretty juicy well, in some some circumstances. They're all done by round seventeen too, so well, then all their buys seven, happen in a short period. Round seven, you got five price rises happening, so you could have had a cheap explode out of the block, and you've cashed him in for a gun who you could sit and offer or a Tommy Soleo out for that week. And I'm carrying Burton as my second five eight, so I can sit Dewey for Burton that week. So looking good. Carrying Burton as your second. Who are you carrying as your first? Dewey. Oh, yeah. They're pretty evenly balanced. I think you said that three times. You did, you did. I know. So I've got it's been Schuster. a long day. I've got Schuster plugged in there at the moment. Yeah, I see. I'm looking for value everywhere I can. So I've got Schuster, Schuster in the back row at the moment. But that could change. I am, I think I actually ended up with that, to be honest. Schuster in the back row. Schuster in the back row. Once. So by the time I played around with it, I didn't re realise Hetherington's dual position. So the front row... Like that versatility, just be able to swap him around, especially while I'm trying to jack the team that I want to start the season. Yeah, uh, that just makes you like him even more. I know there's the risk of suspension, but I mean, hopefully he gets a little bit of that out of him. But then, you know, teams need that big bloke that's got that attitude to go out and fight everybody else's big bloke. I love bloke it. Don't change, that. Jack. Don't change. Rip people's heads off, mate. Yeah. You intimidate. Yeah, 100%. Push through, bro. You love it. We love it. There's no loading anymore, you. bro. Who cares? No loading anymore. Go for it. All right. Um, so we'll go to some questions. I think you had one before. It was from... Who was it from? Brado. Yeah, well, Brado was asking, I believe. Oh, yeah. Brado and Aaron Jeffries both asked a very similar question. Um, Brado says, how many Storm players would Danny Sackle load up with this year? What is the maximum? From any one team, you should have to start. And then Aaron Jeffrey said, "How many players should we have per club? Two max. I have three Roosters and three Penrith, and feel that's too much because they have a buy around three and four. Um, look for me. I think as long as they don't have the buy together, as long as those, too bad. and also as long as the three and f the three players that you have aren't all three marquee players. Like if you have um, an Angus Crichton, a Tedesco." And a Suwali sitting, for instance, or a Sam Walker. That's a lot of talent to be sitting, if you know what I mean, for one well, round. Well, I'm willing to run Grant Munster, Pappenhausen, Munster Storm, Ralph and Fire in and miss that one week where they have the boy because I know they're going to well and truly make up that and what other people are going to put out week in, week out, in between. So what if if you look at it in that way, you could <clears throat> you could have five players from one side. If they if, if everyone's Aww. scoring sixty fives and they're all their Ma wingers Ma are scoring hundreds, maybe towards the end of the year, once you're running twenty twenty two guns kind of thing, yeah, semi guns and maybe, but at the start of the year, you know, I think five's way too much if they're coming into a buy. Yeah. All right. Well, that only leaves you. 20 players to make up 17 from early on where you would load it with cheapies and middies and good bees, good knots. Yeah. It's a tough one. All right, boys, got a couple of questions from the live. Um, Dylan Jones, thoughts on Reese Walsh for a pod? I like him. I had him until I got KP about two weeks ago or something. Big fan. I think he's 
going to a much better team. The Warriors gave up 18 months ago. So he's been playing for a team that gave up 18 months ago, and we, we've seen flashes of what he can do. Broncos are a decent team. They're probably fringe top eight. So I like to see big improvement for East Walsh. Not so sold. Not so sold. Why not? Did you watch him at the Warriors last year? I mean, sometimes he was the only guy on the field. He also gave up too. Probably around the time he was negotiating his contract with the Broncos behind closed doors before it got announced towards the end of the season. He gave up too, which says for me, if he gives up, then he gives up. You know what I mean? He's not a bloke that's just going to pump it for 80 minutes, win, lose, or Stone draw. kicker, bro. And Should go work construction if he wants to kick stones. What, would a player who won't pay a $4,000 fine who's on $600,000 a year He's but will miss the first three weeks of the season, you're still happy to have him in your super coach team? I don't have him in my super coach team. I think you will, but... but yeah, not at the moment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You will, yeah. yeah. How do you? Like, <laughs> he's nowhere near my team at the moment. He's way overpriced for me. Um, but, yeah, he's a grub. Like, for four grand. Like, but he puts that in the pokies over Christmas, you know. I've got no fucking doubt. He's pumped. He puts it somewhere. He's put a cold con. Sorry? Have you got a cold oh, con? just a bit of a sniffle. Yeah. So bagged a lot. Um, but, yeah, so, I don't know. He, what he did was weak anyway for $4,000. It's not very teams to thing to do. Not His at all. Third-party sponsors probably would have even picked that up for yeah. you. <laughs> um, at four grand. But, yeah. Could have started to go fund me from the team. They probably would have paid it. No, nah, oh, you guys talking about Matto, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's clear what his strategy was. He was going to come out and be like, nah, 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 nah. And then this year they've gone, you better be able to fucking play. And he's gone back and tried to appeal it. He thought he'd get off on appeal. That was his strategy from the get-go. He was like, nah, we'll just sneak it in before next season. You'll be right, mate. You know, whether it was his choice or the club's. No, it was he, his. He copped heaps, he copped heaps over um, copping the fine instead. It's of, a tiny fine. No, he especially for what he gets paid, bro. Like, you can afford it. Like you said, third parties. Like, there was no excuse to not just accept the fine. Aside from you wanting to take your stand. Well, guess what? <laughs> bow, bow. Yeah, this is what happens when you take a stand. You've got to face the consequences of the shit that you're talking about. Spewing, it's not like eight weeks or something where he got, like, hop good out there for a bit. Got it doubled. I, to I can it. see hop good doing the near Cora where he starts and then Matto comes on and hop good stays on too. Massive raps on him. You got any more in there? Um... Yeah, Rossman just likes uh, Nofo. Uh, Rossman also says sucked in Maddo. Shame foot and my stupid starting Teddy and Turbo at fullback. No. Nah. No. I've got him. Nah. Footy brother, same. I got him. You got it. I got it as well. I mean, it's the classic fullback combo, and if you can afford it, why not? I mean, how everyone's been waiting, craving, getting the Teddy Turbo combo going. Well, look, last year you could have started with it, and it was it was a game cruel, which is also one of the reasons that swayed me off Nico. He's worth a lot. Is it Turbetty? Yeah. Turbetty? Or Turberco? It's a bully. It's the Teddy Turbo combo. It's Ted Bro. Ted Bro? Is it? All right, anyway. I have no idea what years are going on about. Because you know, you know how they give oh, all like you, yeah, exactly. You know how they give like couples nick, nicknames. Well, like Ted I mean, bro. the super coach double combo. It's got to be Ted Bro. Okay. Um. All right, Bowsy. I oh, look at him well, acting he... like he's not all up on it. I had no idea what he was talking about for the first two minutes of that whole conversation. I mean, that conversation didn't even go two minutes. Your perception of time is flawed. Minute then. <laughs> Bowsy, get a champion. Thoughts on starting with Lockie Miller. Does he? I mean, oh, he snuck his way into my side. A uh, uh, fullback in the centres. I'm willing to give him a dice roll, but he'll be one of the people that I boost out of my side if he's going to dump cash come the, the money boost. Like, that's the caveat of going someone that price. It's like, all right, you have two rounds to prove yourself, and if you're not making me money, or at least breaking even, you're gone. If I don't like what I see, and it might not even be his own fault. Newcastle could just look like a bag of shit, you know, and I might not be prepared to give it the five rounds because he was... That amount of money. If he's going to lose me 300k, fuck, that's a player. Yeah. You know? Like, that's the sacrifice I could have made at the start of the season. Keep that shit in the bank. So, Louis, you're going with look, Lockie? Look, I'm, I have to admit, I am tossing it up, but, yeah, I, I don't know at this stage. Um, but I might just say, back to um, the comment by uh, Dale James about Reese Walsh, 
I'd rather spend an extra 40k and probably put Lockie Miller in over Walsh at fullback. Or even your 20 and get Turbo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. I think yeah. if, you, if if he's looking to partner him but with Turbo... I'm assuming he's got Turbo. Yeah, that's it. He was in my team last week. Because that's both your uh, yeah, fullback sorted for only about 10% of your cap. Or well, no, less than 10% of your cap now. Well, it's, just, it's so, like $150,000 more than just buying Pappen out of Yeah. And you're getting two could be, well, you know, one absolute gun. Absolute monster. One possible could be a breakout gun. If Broncos click, they've got well, the forward pack KP's to do it. Gun. He's got the numbers in the past to prove. He's got the half there to do it. They've got a solid half. Like, like, there's no reason. There's the, the structures there. So it's just a question if they can put it together with the Broncos. He's a wait, watch and see for me. Um, just because he only played three games of NRL last year or four games. So you're only getting the sample size of him. He hasn't played a season and he hasn't had a pre-season with Newcastle. He got there yesterday or today. So, so it's two or four weeks. Oh, you're mad. Mad. The rest of the team's been together since, what, December? Uh, it's, it's one of those things. He's, he's underdone, I think. Dang it wrong. Could be good by the end. I've got him in 120K in case Mike does. He said he doesn't fire and Bell does. Quick swaps your doozies straight to Valheim, then ooh baby. See, as long as you got your strategy. Got another one over there, lad. Yeah, I got one. Roscoe, Ross Man, part of the Off the Bench podcast. Um, who are the must-haves, fellas? If there are must-haves this year, who are they to you? Who can you sort of peg if, tur- if you want? If Turbo proves he's fully fit. And starts the season at 600k. He's a must-have for me. Yeah, I don't care about injury history or anything. I'll take six weeks of turbos banging out 120s, and then he can break down as much as he wants. I don't care. But yeah, he's a must-have at that price. And I think Josh Schuster's is probably second cl- next closest at his price, starting five eight from Manly. I think he's just about as close as you can have if there is a must-have. Yeah. Does he any must haves for you to start the year? Like if you've been seeing anything or hearing anything or you got your own little Turbo. Theory? Um, I'm thinking Birdo might very well be a must have to be honest. Like goal kicking dominant half. What about Munster, Walker, Dylan Brown? Value bro, he can easily get up to that amount. He's Dylan Adam Brown I'm Dewey. curious about Adam Dewey, him, um and Cody Walker, they're all around the same price tag. And I don't think Dylan Brown's overly more expensive. Munster's obviously the next level up. but Munster, for me, I think he's only that level up because he got to play them games at fullback. He's um, another 350k up. That's the thing. Munster's, Munster's another level up where he has a six or the one of his back row. Well, that's, that's the question, right? If Puppy's not there to start the season, who does start at fullback? Is it Munster? If or he is, is it Meany? straight into my team. I think it's Nick Meany. See, for me, yeah, I think if Munster starts in the fullback role, I jump straight on. Yeah, well, now that I they've figure lost he's been Cooper training Johns for it. as a replacement. <laughs> I just think, yeah, I think Nick Meany, he does a job better there than he does in at 5'8", if you catch me drift. Or, but does Munster? Oh, Munster does fill better. the gap. Munster does way better at fullback than he does at five eight. So the way that Munster outperforms Nick Meany at fullback does that counteract the way that Maybe. Munster outperforms Nick Meany at five eight? Maybe it's not what's best for the team. Maybe him being up in that front line. Well, why they finish the season last year that way if it wasn't best for the team? I think Nick Meany he went down. She didn't he? He did. All right, Danny Sackle has replied to Brad and said he's having two old Castle vad- vodkas on ice, one VB and something fruity for Brad Smith. Keep the change. Two gin and tonics, two vodkas and a scotch. I'll have five cougars, thanks. <laughs> 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 Lou, you probably don't remember that, do you? No. Oh, oh amazing. Bro, Google that. <laughs> uh, Luke Straight Smith. up, we can get away with it today. <laughs> get me Smith. too for it. Think... Think we'll bar- think we'll see more barge over tries, particularly from hookers with the new both feet on the line behind the line rule. Cheese. When defending in the goal. If so, cheese and grants are must haves. 
Robson too. In Robson, that same Robson likes a little sneak. Eh? Cook as well, man. Like Cooks likes a little sneak. He go himself as well. Is oh, it? Reed Marnie's a bit of a glory hog too, so it could benefit him. That's the thing. Well. I'm thinking Reed Marnie could be a possibility as well. Well, Serato's going to change that team up, man. Well, you can see you've seen in years gone past where Reed Marnie he'll go. Short ball to the front row for a crash over play trying to get the try assist. And then you've got another crash over play trying to get the try assist. Where you can see there's numbers either to the left or the right. Moses and Br- Tillbags are calling it. But he's just. Look at me, I'm Reed. Yeah, I agree. Fuck Reed. It might beat it out of him, you never know. <sighs> anyway. But uh, look, hookers for me, I think there is options there. I think this year. The options, not just Harry Grant or Bust. I think you can go with Robson and a cheese or... I, I I do still think Harry Grant is probably the best option. Well, he'll be the one you're aiming to get. You yeah. know what I mean? So like why not that's it, like Munster. He's near 900k. And that's that's 1.8 mil. That's There's a reason why they're that price. I know, though. but it's a significant amount of your salary cap to get started. I'm we trying see, to make money, and then the, they're the guys pay, I'll bring in as soon as they hit match fitness. We seen $1.2 million for Turbo last year. And ruined them. I bet yeah, you, but I, bet, I didn't do that. I bet you 9 out of 10 of them Turbo owners aren't touching Nick Owens this year. That's why, <laughs> if, if Paps is named for round one, I'm getting straight on board. Because nobody else is going to touch him, I reckon. Hopefully. <sighs> Him oh, and there'll, Turbo. There'll be a few buzz. It's risky, 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 but I do like it. Because you're again. paying top, top dollar for it. I mean, not top dollar by Pap's standards, let's be honest. No, you can do you can do better. Yeah, 950 is actually not a terrible starting price for him. Because if he's going to go to 1.5, 1.6. We'll take away the injuries in his beaten down games where his confidence was at all time low because he's been knocked the hell out too many times. He's averaging well over 100. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's still, an he's absolute still, weapon. Still the dearest dude in the game with all those issues last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty crazy when you think about it like that. Half an ounce is at the top, so like the dude played half a fucking season. And half of it was <laughs> Like straight up. Yeah, well that's it. To be honest, most of those points came in like the first five games where he was just an absolute freak. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like one thirty or something, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's just crazy. Shannon Pukowski, yeah, no. how's Bergs feel about the Penrith Bulldogs? Well, Shan, I want to take you back to this one time when we had heaps of good players and the Roosters come raped us, right? Parramatta. Parramatta did it first, yeah, yeah back in the 90s. And then, um, yeah, anyway, we'll get to that later. But it's about time we started putting some back on, you know. like We, we got gutted a couple of times there and... Granted, we had good junior base system back then, and things were, like we had great defensive coaches too. I think like we were dogs of war. But today, oh, we need we need a change. I don't know if buying the whole of Penrith is is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, to be honest, you've bought a third of it, but I think you've bought a good third. It's a question of as long as you've gotten value for money and you can keep up that Penrith sort of uh, spirit. Or, you know, culture or of just train, train, train. Fuck no, Work bro. hard they the way they do. They want to bring do. out the Bulldogs 80s culture. They don't need your Penrith culture. Yeah. They're going back to the old days. Which is, with, with a defensive coach like Serrata, I think it's a step in the right direction for the clubs. As long as he keeps it fit and playing back. footy. They've got Josh Reynolds back. Yeah, we're doing They're runners They're bringing back Canada. others, and like in the club roles and stuff there. Look, man, They're I going back to their roots. I don't mind Terry Josh Reynolds Lamb being back. All the time. I think, yeah, that's it. Josh Reynolds They're will show him what to do in the change rooms. They're on the way up and up and up. I've, yeah. I've been saying this for on all off-season. On and off, off the season. field. Yeah, I've been saying this all off-season, bro. I'd be unhappy with anything less than a nine. All I need is to bring Braith back. No, we don't. Get wake up to yourself. He's got too many jobs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andrew Barkworth. Barco, brother. Wilton, if he starts, lads. Tiger Wilton, the Sharks. I'm yeah. saying he won't start again. Wade Graham will start. It's like I told you all last year when he come back from his concussions. He's the captain. He's the leader. He has said he doesn't feel fit enough. He's still got... Openly. That was two weeks ago. So he's still got six weeks of intense pre-season training to get fit. It's probably really hot that day too. And he can't, <laughs> he, he can't just turn around and say, yeah, man, I'm walk-up start to the team because I'm the captain, can he? 
That wouldn't yeah. be very humble of him, would it? It's called fucking be a little bit cocky. Everyone likes that. Not everyone. Okay. But yeah, that's the questions for the week. Um, lads. I got got one more. But Shane. anyway, would you get on T. Wilton if he starts? I would. I don't if know. If he's starting and playing 80. I think there's better options out there, to be honest. I'd definitely, I'd be having a look, put it that way. I'd wait, for, I'd probably wait a couple of weeks. I wouldn't just jump on at the start. But how, what's your price at? Because if his value... 450 ish I think. That is pretty good value. Don't quote me on that. I'm probably wrong. I'm pretty yeah. sure he did. He got to a decent price yeah, last he, year because I sold him when off. When starting? At a 493. Price. 493. 493. So he got, he's got the possibility of getting the 650 if he gets a roll there. He's 500. It's a big ask. It's a, it's, a, it's one of them mid yeah, ranges yeah, yeah. that can go sideways on you. you know? yeah, well, it's, it's a high end of mid ranger, so you, it's, you just got to be careful. And the same thing, you might be one of those players that you just you got a little star next to you that you're prepared to just. All right, if he's just going to start leaking cash, get him out of the side. You know, you might bring him back later on if he starts going on a run and you know he finds his game or whatever. But yeah, if they don't start strong for me, straight out. Yeah. Uh, got um. Uh, we've got Shane Foote. Um, who's your best cheapies this year? Well, we don't have any yet, Shane. That's half the problem. We've got a lot of speculation, but we're really waiting on TLT or at least trials. Trials will give us a, an idea of who's well, doing well. Tuesday will be a lock. In, in 90, it should be, should be a lock in at, 90. At, at his Kalo, price. Kalo. Kalo, he'll get a spot Kalo. round one, and he'll be a keeper like Suwali last year. Taylor May. From where? What's that? It's a fullback that he was talking about earlier. You get the right wing spot and kill it. Hopefully. How do you spell the name? Kalo Kalo. K A L O K A L O. All right, sweet. Kalo Kalo. He does have a first name, I just can't remember it. J Lo. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrell. Uh, and the other the kid that I was talking about, Tyrone Munro. Okay. Munro, keep an eye Monroe, out for him. Monroe. He's been scoring a lot of tries down the wing. All Tall right. and very pacey. So there's still a fight on for his wing spot. Yeah. You're telling me. Oh, I think so. It's all speculation. I showed you something just before. Um, sent to me by the NRL Supercoach Pro. It is a rugby league fantasy pro. Yeah, this is insane, man. Like, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. If any sort of number that you're trying to find... It's going to give it to you. Burke showed it to me, and it sort of blew my mind because I've been searching exactly for something like this. It's pretty cool. You can find minutes. You can find analytics. You can find stats on players, price break even, projections, data, just team analysis, player ownership, captains. Right? Like If I look at the player ownership, I can then sort it by uh, the rank of team and above. So some of this stuff's now included with the app, but... For the last couple of years, it hasn't been. It's pretty epic. I've uh, I've only just been showing it tonight, and I'm going to have a bit of a deep dive into it over the next week because, uh, yeah, this looks think? pretty epic. Have you seen it, Con? No. Yeah, have idiot. a look, man. No, I've, I'm not going to look tonight. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it is, it is, you know what, got sent to um, Sa- Saxy in our clothes group. Um, I did have a quick look at it, and I thought, well, this is right up. Your alley, you know, and so I brought it around tonight and have a look at it over the next week. Uh, I'll send it to you too, Louie. Have a look over the next week and you got no social, so you'll have to do it with me. We're right. Um, well, but, I like it, mate. But, yeah, so we'll work it out together and you boys just... Or not. Just, yeah, or not. You boys definitely have a look at it and work it out because we might not get there between two of us. Just a reference for all the viewers that didn't hear, What what's the name of it again? Uh, Rugby League Fantasy Pro. There we go. Dot com. It's a website, so you might not have to wait for me. You might be able to have a peruse on your own. Lucky man. Now, Ooh. does anyone have our overall group code handy? Hold on, I should have it from last week. Um, now, our overall group code is 709236. Get involved, beat the boys. Now, Con, you should have a league, I believe. If you're in last week's league that con threw out um just leave it we'll put, throw out a couple more leagues over the next couple of weeks but we're we're trying to share the love couple of people miss out it. like just don't like 
Leave the league. No, if you're already in the first league, d- like stay oh, don't in that join one, others. Jump in the uh, wait till the end, sort of thing. That way, everyone gets sort of an opportunity because I already had a couple of messages saying oh, I missed out. So, <coughs> well, there's one still. Yeah, what's the number for that one? Six zero six seven two three. Six zero six seven two three. All right. Um, gentlemen, anything else you want to add? No, I reckon that's about it. Yeah, Jazzy, did you want to quickly run through your team so we can either tell you to go look at something for next week? All right, we're getting smashed by mozzies in the Caribbean of Courage. Fair enough. Gentlemen, yeah. it's been a pleasure. See you Coaches. next week. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Oh, I've got smashed. Peace, before. guys. See everyone next week.